As we said at the end of June, we want to keep our customers and followers better updated about the progress of our products. So today, let's go over the status of the Portal, Crystal Light, Crystal Super, MR Cover, Wide FOV lenses, 60T Airlink, Pimax Play, and yes, the 12K. We have a lot to go over, but before we dive into each individual product, I would like to highlight that Pimax takes on many, many challenges in VR. We're often praised for our successes and criticized for when we do run into difficulties. Both these voices are true and both probably are fair. Both our successes and hardships spring from the same source. the aim to challenge conventions. We aim at big targets. So yes, sometimes we do run into unforeseen problems that delay our goals. But we achieve goals that other companies wouldn't even attempt. Anyway, let's go. At Pimax, we're never afraid to push for new innovations and try new things. The Portal is the world's first VR handheld that powers both Android and VR games. And this is true. But it's also true to say that the Portal has not been the commercial success we envisioned. At this moment in time, there are no plans to further develop the product, nor plans for a Portal 2, as our efforts go fully out to the other products described in this update. We will still roll out critical software updates for the Portal though. We are clearing the warehouses and you can actually pick up this 4K handheld pretty cheap. See the link in the description. Then the Crystal Light. Crystal Light for us is actually two SKUs. One without local dimming and one with. The local dimming version has been in production for several months now, starting with the first batch going out in May. But we're still running into bottlenecks that reduce the speed of production. To explain a bit more, the bottlenecks are, for instance, glass lenses. And this is an old story because it was also one of the bottlenecks for the original crystal as well. Glass is a fantastic material with great optical qualities, but it's hard to produce, or at least slow to speed up production for. And we could opt for faster, cheaper, easier resin lenses, but we do not want to do that. Crafting glass lenses takes a lot of time. It's not just pouring hot glass into a mold and letting it cool down and done. The steps, let's take it through it. A piece of high quality optical glass is put into a mold and heated to over 600 degrees Celsius. And this then becomes the basic shape of our lens. There, under high pressure, it slowly cools down to prevent any imperfections inside the material. After that, the lens is inspected with high precision using an interferometer. If it passes the test, then they're fine-tuned with a grinding machine. The next step is polishing, so that the surface is extremely smooth and clear. After that, the lenses are coated with anti-reflective layers. Then they're checked again to measure optical qualities. Then finally, they're packed and shipped to the Pimax factory. There, they're assembled into a lens frame to be assembled onto the headset or directly shipped to the customer. And that's glass lenses. It's a real craft product. Another factor that slows down production is quality control. We already spoke about this before. We strictly check each headset on several aspects and this takes time and it also reduces yield rate because yes sometimes we do find a headset that has left the assembly line and does not meet our requirements and we do not want to ship that to customers. Then the last factor is sometimes we're short on key components such as display panels or display port cables. And this causes hiccups and causes delays of a few days that then have an echo effect on the rest of the entire production. The Crystal Light is the most popular headset in Pimax history and we're working hard to get them shipped to everyone, but we want to do it right. We are in touch with users who have ordered and are still waiting, and we'll keep posting new shipping estimates. The one published last week you'll find in the description below. If you order the Crystal Light now, you will have to wait at least six weeks. Meanwhile, we are increasing the speed of production as we iron out all the challenges. Then the non-local dimming version. The original panel envisioned for this does not yet meet our requirements. Each refresh rate option has different imperfections and we do not want to ship it in this status. For the customers who pre-ordered this version, we cannot let you wait any longer. You'll receive an email to pay the remainder of your pre-order. After that, we'll ship you the headset with local dimming and let you use the local dimming for two weeks for free from the moment you activate the Pimax Play software, which is tied to your serial number. After that, we close the local dimming feature, otherwise this isn't fair to other users. However, if you like it, you can still upgrade through a paid update. This is the best solution we can come up with right now. Then the Crystal Super. The Crystal Super is actually well in development and we're expecting to start shipping the QLED before the end of this year. We recently published an update about this, so let's not go into this one. Then the MR cover. The MR cover is being tested internally. It is actually working. We still need to improve the image stitching and other areas of the software, but it is being worked on. The prototype doesn't look pretty yet, so we're not sharing any photos. Right now, we cannot give a shipping date yet. 
And then another hot topic, the wide FOV lenses. The wide FOV lenses push the optical limits in terms of extracting FOV from the panels of the Pimax crystal. Our first batches of these lenses have met mixed responses. Some users sensitive to a lower stereo overlap similar to the Vario Era did not enjoy these lenses. Others have experienced other things, choosing to revert back to the default 35 PPD lenses on the crystal. At the same time, due to limited production capacity for optical glass lenses for VR headsets, we have momentarily prioritized lens production for the Pimax Crystal Light. This is not an easy decision we had to make. And we know this is taking very long, plus the reactions were very mixed. This is why we are giving users the option to, instead of receiving the white FOV lenses, to receive a discount coupon for future Pimax purchases. The other option is to continue to wait for users that really want these lenses. The estimated shipping time for white FOV lenses is now later this year. Let's talk about 60D Airlink. Ever since CES earlier this year, I'm also really in love with this technology and I'm really, really looking forward to it. In Frontier, we set the hardware as final, although we are making one change. We are replacing one chip on the board in the transmitter. This will allow for a bigger and more stable bandwidth connection. The rest of the 60D Airlink is all ready to go, including the software. We can achieve 90 FPS very stable, and we're confident of shipping the 60D Airlink this year. Then Pimax Play. We now see Pimax Play as its own product rather than just a driver for our headsets. And this mindset change is good for our users because a lot of innovations in VR are actually coming from software, an area that in the past we did not focus on as much as we should have. There is now a dedicated team at Pimax working on Pimax Play and it's growing. We will share our roadmap later, so I won't go into too much detail for now. But we do have a lot of processes in place that help us create this roadmap for features and improvements, which is maybe interesting to share. We as a company are always in touch with the community on Discord and Reddit and through roadshows. And this hasn't changed. We also have a monthly customer satisfaction survey. We have several beta and feedback groups. And we organize focus groups in our offices. And most importantly, we now have a daily Bezos meeting named after T.S. Bezos and his customer-centric approach. This makes sure knowledge and customer feedback can easily spread into our company, to all departments. This is greatly improving a lot of processes and makes sure customers are heard. Then let's talk about the 12K. From the start of the project, the goal for the 12K was extremely ambitious, but we had solutions for each of the key technical challenges. Unfortunately, some of these solutions did not meet our quality requirements. Not only that, some bottlenecks also exist on today's graphic card. And when designing a VR headset with specs this extreme, every step in the process needs to be explored and finalized. And the technical design is one thing, but then a working prototype needs to be made, as well as protocols for the factory. It also needs to work with common PCs that exist today. Each link here needs to be solved one by one. Here's an example. Nvidia's most powerful graphics card, the 4090, can drive display devices up to 8K at 60Hz with a single video interface. And that's enough for the Pimax 8K, the Crystal or the Crystal Lite. But already, these headsets run close to the limits of DP 1.4 interface. The bandwidth of DisplayPort 1.4 is 32.4 gigabits per second, but the effective bandwidth or throughput is actually 25.9 gigabits per second. When the Crystal Light or Crystal runs at a refresh rate of 120 Hz and uses display stream compression, then the actual used bandwidth is already very, very close to this value. Then the last bit of bandwidth we need for more things than just the image. Think about SLAM algorithm tracking, the hand tracking, MR image processing, image stitching, eye tracking, and audio. We can push the screen compression a bit more. It's visually lossless. But even with that, for the 12K, we cannot achieve the required bandwidth. We have tried a dual DP 1.4 solution with a dual bridge chip, but we're not satisfied with the solution or its outcome on the visual quality. So we have to wait for a GPU with a DP 2.1 interface, which Nvidia right now does not have. AMD does have one but there is currently no suitable bridge tip to support it. And then there are other key challenges that we choose not to share right now. Think about lenses or the housing. We need to solve these challenges one by one, and some of them are not in our hands. 12K is in development and will be built on all the headsets that have come before it, such as the Crystal Super. And that is coming first. That is it for now. We said we would do a better job in communicating about the status of our products. Thank you for your support and see you next time. <music>